and welcome back to the From the Terrace podcast. That he knows, he knows it off by heart. <laughs> my, my words. And this is episode three of Champ Talk as we review game week three of the championship and preview game week four. Regan first. We'll get into um, game week three, obviously, the one that's just passed. Um, I'm just brilliant at calling shots. Huddersfield Town have beaten Nottingham Forest by one goal to nil at the John Smith Stadium. Uh, decent result, that, isn't it? That is embarrassing. I'm sorry. <laughs> Everything I said about Nottingham Forest are then my pick to go up in the uh, this season in the playoffs. Just forget what I said. No, I think they could be one of my picks to go down at this rate. That is absolutely embarrassing. Huddersfield. And How that, does... that, that man gets on the score sheet, doesn't he? He seems to turn up two or three times a year. It's Big old just... Fraser Campbell. Um, yeah, that game, well, I mean, uh, we, we said we said last week, I mean, I predicted this result, but we said last week like we were going to slate Nottingham Forest a lot. I think, I think it's only right because I'm, we'll wait to see how Huddersfield do under this new manager. There's some promising signs. There's some not so promising signs. But the problem really is with Nottingham Forest right now. Um, they've got, I believe, Bristol City on the weekend as well, which we'll obviously get into. Um, how long do you, I mean, I've called it beginning of the season, how long do you give Lambucci for if it keeps on going like this? Well, if he keeps going, if he keeps going like this, I'll give him like, I don't know, end of October, November. I mean, he can't, he can't carry on like, there's no chance he can carry on like putting, putting performances like that. But I mean, yeah, Huddersfield, well, they're better than what we've seen of Huddersfield because, like you, like, like you said mainly, that their new manager actually wants to play some football for once. But for, uh, yeah, but back to your question, I'd say, well, wait, what's the date? No, I wouldn't give it any September because that's tomorrow. Um, end of October, I'd say, because that's like, what, another four game weeks? Three, four game weeks? You can't string any results together by then, then... I'd be worried for him if he's not if he's not worried of his job now. And by the end of the next month, he's got to be. I was just checking now to make sure I was right, and I am right. Nottingham Forest haven't scored a goal this season in cup or league. Um, so I mean, is that do you think that's their problem then? I mean, it seems like it'd be the blaring the obvious thing to say is their issue. Lewis Graven obviously scored over fifteen goals in the league last season, and Lyle Taylor, though, who was banging them in for Charlton as well, but obviously had his injury problems. They're the two strikers. A lot of people thought that bringing in Lyle Taylor and having him as backup to Graben would sort of, would just would help boost Forrest even further and score a lot of goals and they wouldn't have to really worry about that of two natural strikers. I mean, are you convinced by Lyle Taylor signing or do you think maybe Lewis Graben had a bit of a one-off good season? Or I, I was convinced because um, that's why I, that's why I mainly predicted why the, they'd be so high is because I think that Based on last season, they those two were phenomenal in their individual teams. Mm-hmm. Like if you combine both their goals together, uh, just in one team, that's that's a team that could go up comfortably. Yeah. But uh, is was it a one hit from last season for Graben? Uh, I mean, I, I haven't seen well, literally, no one's seen any signs of it this season because he hasn't scored yet, neither's Lars Taylor. But I feel like the two good class strikers. I feel like it only take. A couple of games or so for them to start scoring some goals, and then I feel like it will increase in fluidity, and then I can see the goals come in thick and fast. But it's just a matter of when they'll start scoring for them because it might not happen in the end. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I think you do have to give it some time because of, I mean, naturally, seasons do start slow, and obviously, we're in a very different sort of predicament at the moment. But it is worrying for Nottingham Forest at the moment. It does look, and we know if you, if you start so slow and you keep carrying on like this, even if it's only for a couple of months and they finally pick it up, you've left yourself such a big gap to recuperate and to try and get into these playoffs. Um, I mean, I think we can already decide now that Nottingham Forest are not a top two promotion side. So Kevin Campbell was wrong on his preview on his predictions of the championship. Um, and Forest have also brought in they brought in like we said the Scott McKenna, the Harry Arters. I mean, I know they've not been on. I mean, I, they really have got a boost, a bulked out squad now. There's no real excuses, really, is there for Lambucci? I wouldn't say. I'd That's say, all. I'd say it's just it is really poor. Um, next, we'll go on to uh, Reading, who are table toppers, along with another couple we're going to mention later. They won two. Was it two nil at Cardiff? Sorry, two one. Two nil. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. I believe it's two nil. I just got the championship scores 
but lost on the set. Uh, no, two one. It was two one. Uh, oh, Cardiff got a late reply, but um, it's, it's Lucas Zhao's back in the goals. Uh, I mean, he was he had his spells at Sheffield Wednesday, but he's not exactly at the ground running at Reading. Um, and another guy who got another assist is Olise, the midfielder. Him and Ajaria seem to be epitomising what Reading are all about at the moment. Seems to be quite creative, free flowing football. Um, what do you make of their start to the season? Because I mean, I, I've, I've just taken us by surprise. I would have thought. Yeah, I was going to say if if anyone's predicted Reading to go go free for free and be be top of the table, even though it's after three game weeks, then I called you I called you a liar. I definitely, especially you've uh, I mean you've beaten Cardiff, who beat Nottingham Forest last last week. I mean it's not like an accomplishment at the moment, but it's still a good Cardiff team that reach. It's the same squad that reached um, reached the playoffs, yeah. and they. I didn't really look too troubled by Cardiff for the majority of the game. Mm. I felt like they controlled they controlled most of it, and they, uh, yeah, they got their two goals quite well uh, early and midway through the second half. So that really put the pressure on Cardiff, and that's what I like about the Reading team is that even though they're ahead, I didn't really see it a lot last season, but when they're ahead this season, they're constantly pushing for another goal. I saw a lot last season; they were. Push, they kept back after a lot of goals mm. and um, after they score one they just sit back but now they're just constantly attacking if they're one or two goals up because they want more goals and I like that from them but yeah I don't know where I don't know where Cardiff I mean, I'm not going to say where to Cardiff go from here because they haven't started great but they, they I still believe they have a squad to pick themselves up again but it's a great start for Reading but I'm not expecting them to stay around the area which they are for, well that sort of answers my next question I was going to say like this Reading team, do you think that's the key for them doing well this season? Then they have to keep going for more goals because they've clearly got attacking threat in the side. But when I read you this defence, they've got uh, Aruna Hoffman, they've got Morrison, they've got Liam Moore and they've got Jazz Richards. Do you really see that as a defence that can keep out goals and especially compete at the top of the championship? Because in my opinion, I don't see that. Um, although Liam Moore has been there before with Reading under Yap Stam and been top, I, I still can't see that as a team that if they, I feel like if Reading are going to do well this season, which I didn't predict they would, it is going to be a team. They're going to have to hope that they can get a consistent season out of Lucas Zhao, which no club's managed yet, a consistent season. And they're going to have to have Yaku Mete still scoring goals alongside and pretty much hope Ajaria is, good, is fit all season. Um, it, does, they, it does look good now. But in my opinion, that squad doesn't have loads of depth. Um, and I, 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 I don't think you can rely on Lucas Zhao to have a consistent season in the Championship, really. He's more than capable of, ha- of having one. More, yeah, he, more than he, he, he has got the ability. He clearly scores. He scores some good goals, but it's just—is he going to do it? It's exactly. If he can, then watch out for them. I'd say. Yeah, yeah, because Lucas Zhao is a worry for mo- a lot of defenders in the championship. It's just he's very in and out of sides a lot of the time. Um, a result, a result that maybe we didn't see as being as emphatic as it was, but we did see coming was Blackburn winning four 0 at Derby. Um. Is this a result that more highlights how good Blackburn are or how bad Derby are? I think a bit of both. I mean, no matter no matter how good you are, if you're going that, if you're going three 0 down inside fifteen minutes, you you're obviously not all the races at them. Um, yeah, at the moment. Uh, but full credit to Blackburn. You and me both said last week that Tony Mowbray is a is a fantastic manager. I mean, we saw that against Wickham, but it's Wickham. Um, but scoring four goals against a struggling Derby team, but it's it's a good result at the end of the day. And Tony Murray knows how to get good performances out of players like Adam like Adam Armstrong, who once again, he looked brilliant throughout the whole game. He he was the man like controlling the entire game. And I've got to be honest, if he keeps up like that, he could make a run for player of the maybe even player of the year, because the way he started off, it's been incredible. No, I completely agree. Adam Armstrong is currently as much as a lot of people maybe not think that as I don't know, maybe to his ability, but Adam Armstrong's one of the best players in the championship at the moment on form. He's scoring lots of goals. He's, he was doing it at the back end of last season. He's he's also a big nuisance to the fence. He, he runs in behind. He he harries defenders. He's a, But he's also got a sort of a bit of finesse. He, I was going to say he's a bit of like a championship Jamie Vardy, but he's not all about just running in behind. He, he, he scores good goals. He has a bit of finesse about him, whereas Jamie Vardy does seem to be more of a raw sort of player. Obviously, also better. He's in the Premier League. Um, but he does seem to feel like that. Uh, 
they're playing some brilliant football. It doesn't seem it doesn't seem like that's going to really stop anytime soon. I do worry about squad depth again, though, with the likes of if Adam the goals do uh, drive from Adam Armstrong. Where do they really come from? I know Bradley Johnson got a couple, but he's he's probably just about it. Lewis Holt, he's never really been a goal scoring midfielder. Um, Joe Roth, well, maybe uh, a bit. Dolan is the young guy. He's okay. Um, I, d- I don't really see too much depth on that bench, though. Um, but yeah, yeah, Blackburn obviously played really well and they played through the thirds really well under uh, Tony Mowbray. And I think they could be a threat to the playoffs this season. They could be, although I did put them 13. That was more out of thinking, can they really keep it up with the squad again? And we'll still yet to see, obviously, it's only game week three. But um, they, they, the first signs for Blackburn look great. Derby, on the other hand, just look a mess, really, don't they? You see that defence is Nathan Byrne, Tavirik, uh Wisdom and Buchanan. Um, yeah, that doesn't seem like a defence that looks great. They've struggled with the business over the summer, haven't they? They are relying heavily on Jordan Sibley, Jason Knight and Max Bird, who are all, um, who are all young players. You can't rely on consistency. And it feels like a lot of Derby fans are very annoyed at Philip Koku's way he's managing the team. He seems to be very reliant on Wayne Rooney. And although Wayne Rooney came in in January and did turn things around for Derby season last season, can you really continue to to rely on an older player like that to play every game and be brilliant every single game? I think that's going to be Derby's downfall. And maybe Philip Koku is... The tactics maybe aren't really there. And he is just relying on the experience of Wayne Rooney to get him through. I think, I, I mean, I'm not going to say much, but I think that's exactly it, is that you can't rely on one player so for, for so long and expect him to do the exact same thing over and over again because eventually teams are going to figure out exactly what you're doing. And mm-hmm. they've started off the season that the teams they've come up against know, know what he's planning to do. Yeah, exactly. It's basically stop Wayne Rooney, you stop Derby, doesn't it? And although yeah. that may sound easier than it is, if you're going to get a few players to harry him, I think there's such little quality in the rest of the Derby side that you can allow them to have the ball sometimes. These young players are good, but they're going to make mistakes. And the defence just seems open as anything. It just seems like an absolute mess. They don't have a proper leader back there, it seems. Um, nope. so Derby is really worrying. And to be honest, it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if you see Philip Koku lose his job soon. It would, that wouldn't surprise me either. Both of the Midlands clubs are, are really struggling. Um, lastly, we didn't we haven't mentioned Bristol City much this season, but they are also joint top of Reading at the top of the Championship. Um, pretty comfortable for win for them against Sheffield Wednesday, really, as we thought, wasn't it? I think that every, every, pretty much every win that they've all three of them have been quite um, comfortable for. Yeah. Um, I expected I expected a bit more out of Sheffield Wednesday because well, I've said it every week that I expect like, a big fight to come out of them because of the situation they're in. But I'm not sure if it's because they weren't at the races that day or the way just the way Bristol City just neutralised the situation that they were in and just took the game took the game on the scruff of the neck and just made it made it theirs for about the ninety minutes essentially and that that scares me about that that team this year is that I didn't see a lot of that under um, Lee Johnson last year that they could take games to the scruff of the neck and just lead it from start to finish. I didn't see that a lot last season. I can see that this season. And even though I didn't predict them to get in the playoffs because I didn't really know how they play this season. If they keep, if they keep this up, they, yeah, like they could even, I'm not, well, I was going to say make a challenge for top two, but who knows if they keep, if they keep this up, yeah. they, there's no stopping it. No, I think you look at the championships this season and there's no reason why not a few teams could make a push for top two. There's not any outstanding side in the division that you'd think that no one could get near. Bristol City carried us form that they're more than capable of getting to the top two. Um, I think I think there's two things of Bristol City this season of why they're going to be much better. Um, it's Dean Holden's consistency in team selection and the start of the season, these game, the, the game week stats, the, the expected goal stat is really in favour of Bristol City this season. For the last few years, that stat has showed that Bristol City, when doing well under Lee Johnson, have been lucky. They've been, I know there's only so much you can read into that stat, but it is a good indicator of how well your team's doing in terms of defensively and attacking. And Bristol City have always been lucky to be up there or lucky to be in the table. And then eventually, that, those stats have caught up with them and they've fallen off. And we've seen that every year. 
But so far this year, I believe after game week three, Bristol City are fourth in expected goals. So they're still right up there. They're deserving to be up there, which is a good early sign that shows that they are winning games, but deserving it as well. This, isn't, this is something that could continue rather than fall off randomly. And like the other thing I said is team selection. It's been consistent. They've got a consistent back three. I know Baker and Callas are out injured and they may come into the side, but they've got a consistent back three there. They've got a, a midfield of Patterson, Bakington and Vimance consistent, although they have got the squad depth to when players are back from injury to bring some people into there. And although it may be, you may get a couple of changes, like the Jada Silva coming instead of Tommy Rowe at wing back and the likes of that on Hunt, maybe change with Sesson Young. The, the, the way the team plays and the main personnel are going to stick the same, it seems, under Dean Holden which was the biggest thing under Lee Johnson. Constant team selections, con- uh, constant change in team selection, constant change in formation, no consistency, which in the end meant the Bristol City tailed off. So I think the early signs of City, they have, I think personally they've been the best team in the league so far this season, haven't they? Yeah, 100%. Right, anyway, predictions. We are, uh, I mean, you're still winning. You, you are still winning. There and one's over there. Yeah, See, which... there's an eleven over there and there's a ten over there because we drew five five this week on predictions. You obviously won game week uh, t- uh, six five, so you are now eleven ten down on predictions. Talking okay, props to you, that Huddersfield one out the out the bag. I've got, I've got to say hands up to that one. That was no. That I'm just perfect. you know uh, I've got a little bit of je ne sais quoi about me. I'm just uh, I, I'm uh, <laughs> I know my champ football inside out. Apart from every other result, but don't worry about that. Exactly. Yeah, apart from all the other games. Um, Friday night football I'll start us off with. It's Coventry versus Bournemouth. Ooh. Uh, Co- well, I wasn't very impressed with Coventry against Barnsley with a bit of a nil-nil, but that's like a, a Barnsley result I expect is a, is a low-scoring game, and that's you're going to get any lower than that. And Bournemouth, quite impressive against Norwich. Uh it's either going to be really high scoring or really low scoring, but I'm going to edge Bournemouth. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I, I think for Coventry suit playing against possession size, we saw that against QPR and Bournemouth is certainly that. But I've been really impressed with Bournemouth's start to the season. And uh, yeah, I think, I think they just have too much quality for Coventry. It's, it would definitely be a close game. I don't, think they'll, I don't think either side will walk over each other. But it'll be a close game. But... I fancy Bournemouth at the moment after beating Norwich. That's a, that's a big test and they, and they passed it. And uh, Dan Juma, I slagged him off before the season. Didn't know much about him. Didn't do anything in Premier League. Scoring goals, doing all right, isn't he? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to join you with Bournemouth as well. Um, speaking of Norwich, this is two teams. This, is, this has got high scoring written all over it, in my opinion. It's Norwich Derby. Norwich. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I I I I've got to go for Norwich as well. I think I think this result isn't because we back Norwich as much, is it? It's just how Derby really are suffering. Little, little, how little we back Derby. Their defence, we don't trust their defence against Timu Puki or Jordan Hugill, do you? At all? Like either of those could play, and you'd worry for Derby's defence. <laughs> be honest, I could see that being like three or four. To be honest, again. <laughs> I'm actually close to laughing, laughing out loud that Jordan Hugo and Timu Puki come up against that defence. Yeah, <laughs> do you, do you know what Derby are like? Derby are feeling like the Fulham of the Championship at the moment. Yeah, all right, we'll get past that. Um, Blackburn, Cardiff. I don't want to do this anymore. No, oh, quite okay. <laughs> yeah. um, I'll go for. I mean, Blackburn are kind of like a steam train, so Blackburn, why not? Hmm. No, I'm going to go Blackburn too. Just keeping these, just keeping these predictions close, so you can't beat me too. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go Blackburn too. I just that means you can't overtake me if you keep yeah, guessing. Yeah, yeah, but the, yeah, but I'll, I'll get there. Don't you worry. There's there's more predictions to come. I'm going to go Blackburn. Look, started very well, and Cardiff seemed like they were just a bit inconsistent. Um, I'm sure they'll uh, get up and running later in the season. They beat Nottingham Forest, but yeah, Cardiff. I think Blackburn's just a safer bet in that game. Um, Luton Wickham. Luton, a Wickham, a Wickham this season going to be our for season one of the podcast of uh, the Huddersfield. It's Huddersfield. They're going to lose. Can they go away? Yeah, Wickham can go away, in my opinion. They offered nothing against Swansea last week. Pathetic. <laughs> Pathetic. <laughs> Awful. Yeah, we'll both go with Luton. Um, Middlesbrough-Barnsley. 
There's links this week for Gerald Schubert is going to New York Red Bulls. I don't know if you've mm. heard that. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I didn't. I heard one source, but that's all I heard of it. So I didn't really. I only took it with a grain of salt. But mm. if that's the case, then that's a that's big implications. That is, um, because I because I just said this a low scoring game and it's Neil Warnock and just because it's Neil Warnock, I'm not sure if he'll be back or not. I feel I think last week he <laughs> yeah he is back. He is, he was back in training today. So. Uh, he used to be back on the touchline. It's going to be low scoring, but if it's low scoring, it's Neil Warnock. I've got to back Neil Warnock, so I'm going to go Middlesbrough. I agree. I'm really worrying for Barnsley now when that news about Stubbs come out. It's not 100% um, accurate or anything. It's only rumours, but it wouldn't surprise me if he left, to be honest, because of the lack of business they've done this summer and they've started really poorly. Everyone thought Barnsley would be okay this season, but... At the moment, it looks like their season could be going down the toilet quite quickly. Uh, I'm also going to go for Middlesbrough. Uh, Nottingham Forest, Bristol City. Well, I think that's the only one result, doesn't it? I'm going to go Bristol City, but it's going to be like it's going to be a typical Nottingham Forest or a typical Bristol City game from last season where it's just not going to happen. And like Forest will win one 0 and everyone will be like, "Oh, who expected that one?" But I'm going to go with my head and say Bristol City. I think this could definitely be nil-nil. Um, I don't know whether this is the one I want to take the risk on or not. But everything informs just Bristol City and the way Forrest have started so slowly, looks Bristol City should walk through them, really. Um, just wondering whether Forrest's defence will be enough to keep Bristol City out. And I just could see nil-nil. I, I, you know what? I'm going to go for a draw. I'm going to go for a draw. My bold shout. I respect that because you don't you well when you've got nothing to nothing to lose like Lambushi yeah. has that anything can happen especially with a team that's got good firepower and as good as defence as Forest do. So I think Forest have notoriously been a team who are good at keeping teams out although it's not gone great this season their problem has actually been scoring goals and Bristol City you could see they aren't they are susceptible I know it's different Bristol City now they are susceptible to having games where they're a little bit off the pace and don't have to show much creativity. Um, yeah, I'm going to go draw. I'll go draw for that one. Next one's Reading Watford. That is hard to call. If you gave me that fixture last season, it's, it's, it's I would have no Watford and put about hundred quid on that. Yeah, but the way the way they both started off, oh. oh. I'm going to go for Watford. I'm going to back Watford just because I think that in those games, I think they have more star quality that could shine them, just put them over the line. So, Me, sorry, I'm, Reading. I'm going to go for another draw. Reading, strong start. I've got a lot of confidence in them. I think they look like a good team at the moment. But Watford have also... Watford, although I don't think... I've hit... Even though they've got seven points, they don't look like they've hit top form yet. They've still got the quality, as you said, to get in that game. Um, I could see there being a few goals in that. And yeah, I'm going to go for a draw just to be just to be a bit different. Um, both teams started well. I think both teams would take a draw in that game, in all honesty, as well. Would yeah. Uh, Rotherham Huddersfield. That sounds like I don't mean to be a bit, but that sounds like a sort of game where just like oh, where living up north just seems awful. <laughs> you know, one of those really boring Yorkshire derbies. They just like they they do happen, don't they? They do happen. That's a game that you'd have to pay me quite a lot of money to watch. Yeah, you'd pay me to watch that. I I would pay people to not watch that. That that's how yeah. dull I think that is. Um, I'm gonna go for Huddersfield because I think I like the way that they're I like the way they're playing and I think they could they can grab a win. So I'm going go Huddersfield. Um, mm, this is tough, me. I'm gonna. Yeah, uh, Rotherham have actually started the season not badly. It beat Wickham. They got a point at Birmingham, and they could have easily won at Birmingham. They're at home as well. They seem to do okay there. Um, off the hardest for the last result should have given me confidence in them, but I still have do did predict them to come bottom of the league. And I, yeah, I'm gonna go Rotherham. I'm gonna go Rotherham on that one. I think it'll be a low scoring Rotherham win. Um, Sheffield Wednesday QPR. 
Oh, Christ, this is another bit of a This is one of those game. games that's hard to call, but not because it's good, because it's bad. <laughs> yeah. Two pretty poor teams, mm. and it's basically flipping a coin to the side. Who, who wins? Uh, I t- there's, there's some signs in that QPR team that makes me want to pick them. But I do... Damn, this is actually really hard. This one, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna back a. Well, I can't decide who's gonna win, so I'm gonna say neither. <laughs> I'm gonna say <laughs> neither are good enough to win, so they have to draw. It's one of those ones. Could you ask if both can lose? Um, <laughs> uh, draw. You've gone for draw. I'm gonna go for Sheffield Wednesday, just because oh, I can see Gary Monk playing some proper or oh, hard gritty football, and QPR don't often deal well with that. So I'll go Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, the last of the Saturday games, you've got Swansea and Millwall. Two teams who have started the season well. Yeah, it's true. Um, Swansea beat Wickham, but... That, yeah. Everyone beats Wickham, so... And obviously Millwall with their draw against Brentford, which is, I think it was a very good result for them. Mm-hmm. I think, even though it's not at home, I think the physicality and just the, I think a lot of pressure that the Mill will put on this season, I think would be too much for Swansea in some areas of the game. I can see a draw, but I'm going to back a low score in Millwall win. I'm going to join you on the Millwall win. Swansea have started well, they play some decent football, but I think there's one thing Swansea struggle against. If there's, there's one thing which Swansea struggle against, it's physicality, like you said. This has got Swansea scoring. This has got Millwall scoring from a corner or a Jed Wallace goal written all over it. They've started well. They are a pragmatic side, Millwall. And Swansea are very good, don't get me wrong. But I feel it's just one of those teams that's going to be a bogey team for them this season. Um, those sort of hard to beat sides, those Route 1 a lot of the time sides, um, I, I, Swansea do struggle against. I don't still don't have much confidence in Swansea's defence either, personally. So I'm going to go for a Millwall win as well. Uh, Sunday games, we've got two of them. First one is Brentford Stoke. No, Brentford Stoke. Sorry, Brentford Preston. Brentford Preston. Yeah, I don't see that fixture. Um... Brentford started mediocrity. Uh, Preston started poorly. Because I, I didn't see didn't see a lot from Brentford against Millwall. No. Uh, but just cause... I will little uh, little uh, Saman Godos, the new guy, has got an international clearance now. And side Ben Rama is in the squad. That's that's why that's that's in my head because I feel like if he even if he plays like ten well not ten like twenty twenty five minutes he will make an impact. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying he's going to, but because I think the rest of the team's just better on paper, I'm gonna say Brentford. I'm also going to back Brentford, although I am really worried about the game because obviously us lot are playing Thursday night. We're playing in the Carabao Cup, Brentford-Fulham. Um, although Brentford will play a mainly changed side, I'm a bit worried that we're going to use that game to get Ben Rama back to full fitness and so he won't play against Preston. We may play Godos in that game too, although a lot of Brentford fans, although we do want to beat Fulham, obviously, would rather get the win in the Preston game. I know that for a fact. A lot of people have said that just to get our league season off to a good start going into the international break. So the only reason I'm a bit worried about this game is I'm not sure all our best players are definitely going to play against Preston. Like, Canos, decent player, but we know Ben Rama and Godos are better footballers. They, they just are. Um, so that gives me a worry. But I am just going to go for Brentford edging it because I know Thomas Barkay's in suspended, who's a big threat for Preston. And they haven't started the season so well. So I'm going to go for Brentford, but I think it'll be low scoring. Um, and then the last game is Stoke Birmingham. Oh my Christ! No. Better not to think of either side, really. To be honest, watching them play, I fall asleep after through the game, so I can't tell you how they perform. Uh, well, it's Karanka. It's in my head again that he's gonna nick it, but it's I. I can't see any other result than just a nil nil. So it's, that's how bad I think these two teams are on the cup yeah. against each other. It's just going to be a nil-nil. So I could say a draw. Uh, I rate that shout, and I, 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 to be honest, I think I'm just... Oh, I'm, I'm going to go different from you. I'm going to go for a Birmingham win. Still not convinced by Stoke at all. They beat a 10-man Preston. Mm. 
doesn't doesn't fill me with confidence. I've, I've, why have I predicted Stoke 4? What am I doing? What am I doing? I, I knew it was stupid at the time. <sighs> anyway, that is uh, episode three of Champ Talk, previewing game week four and reviewing game week three. Remember to like the video, hit the subscribe button on the From the Terrace Podcast YouTube channel, leave us a rating on iTunes, and we'll see you when Brentford are quarter finalists of the Carabao Cup. You're not coming back till next year. Uh, uh.